All right. Got my PTO shield for the tea. We're gonna get ready to spread some urea tomorrow. My new roof showed up, some assembly required. They're supposed to start on that Monday. And I thought these were kind of neat. I, I never, I, I never find deer sheds, never. Don't know, I mean, and partly I'm lucky because it seems like most guys that find them find them in tractor tires and that's no good, but I still, I never have any luck finding deer sheds. Today, I was scouting a field over by Cassopolis, or not scouting, a soil sample in a field over by Cassopolis, and I found a small one. I, that one's inside. I gave it to Teeter to chew on because it was, it was, it's basically just a main beam. There's all the tines got busted off of it because it looks like these things have been through the disc or been through a disc at least twice. And then got ran over by the planter and God knows what else. But I found the, that small one and then there was this little piece next to it. So I gave that to Teeter to chew on too. And then I didn't drive a hundred feet down the same row. Found these guys. A match pair. I wish they weren't so beat up, but I mean I'm not a hunter or anything by any means, but I still think sheds are cool. So I'm gonna keep I'm these these are gonna I'm gonna keep these, but I mean those things are you know there's my hand for size. I mean they're there's some pretty hefty pretty hefty antlers but it's not very often that you find i mean they were laying right next to each other when he shed them he must have both right there at the same time because it doesn't seem it seems like it's not very often that you find sheds that are matched like that so i thought that was kind of neat there you go you can have your antler back antlers are actually good for dogs teeth they kind of act like uh um what's the word uh dental bones they they keep their teeth polished you can you probably can't tell where we've been running the sprinkler for the garden can you that's a project flare this afternoon i got to get the yard mowed after that inch of rain we had last week it took off again i haven't had to mow in three weeks if i remember right but i've already been down to helena and got a load of urea and AMS. There's enough there to spread all the corn that's V6, V7 that actually came out of the ground. The rest of this, the rest of everything is probably going to be probably wait about two weeks, and then we'll spread it. But I'm going to we're going to pull the tee up by the barn real quick so I don't got to walk so far and I got to put the PTO shield back on and pull the monitor off because that doesn't need to be on there. I rearranged the barn a little bit so that I could pull the tractor and spreader in hooked up. Tell you what, it's a bit of a chore shuffling the 150 over in front of the planter but it fits. I need to back to see if I can take the 1600 and put the forks on and back, push the planter back about another 12 inches. grab some tools and we'll get this thing taken care of right quick okay we can 
get these cords off of here. You gotta be careful pulling this out because last year when I did it, there's a few. No clue who you were, but there's a fuse in here and to get to it you unscrew that top there and last year when i did it apparently something i don't know how it must have vibrated loot or must have vibrated off while it was in there and i took it out and everything sprung him a thing down there and i lost the spring and the fuse and the, the whole nine yards and look somehow cause i mean it's just a little dink of a spring and somehow i managed to because I did it right here and it fell, fell in the driveway and somehow I managed to find every piece of it except the fuse. No clue where that ended up, but so lesson for what happened afterwards is from now on when you tear that apart, you do it gingerly so that if there's stuff that's going to spring them a thing, it doesn't uh, come out to get you. shield back on because safety we're always concerned about safety number one more like it looks stupid without the PTO shield so the PTO shield's going back on at some point the PCO unit's gonna have to come off of this thing and get gone through because the shaft seal leaks and the clutch needs overhauled anyway because it drifts. Which, as much as I believe this thing was turned up in the past, it wouldn't surprise me none if, if it did a lot of PTO work if they warped the clutch plate. But that being said, since it since this PTO unit is not off of this tractor, Lord knows what kind of life it had before it got put on here, and the clutch might have been whooped before it even got put on here, and they just never did anything about it. So only one that could tell us the story is the tractor and she ain't talking unfortunately so all we can do is speculate but man wouldn't it life be so much easier if they could talk and tell us exactly what was wrong with them I think I'm gonna have to slide the or slide the draw bar out. Clear the power takeoff. Okay, there's that. Now I need I can't remember what size wrench these are. them that tight or did I do this I might have did now well, come on now okay I guess I'll go get a fire mate so I can use a box set No clue why a half inch wouldn't do it. They weren't even that tight. Apparently it just decided it was going to be difficult.
Okay, I got, I moved the drawbar out a little bit, monitor's off, PTO shield's back on. Last thing I want to do is probably don't need 880 pounds of weight on the nose, so. I'm going to take four suitcase weights off the front and I'll leave four on to help with steering. that I kind of forgot all about is get that hole poured full of concrete. Have to find a, something or other to keep those in. up pulled over here in the shade so I could finish working on it because man you stand out there in that sun for very long and whew, about baked the hide right off of you but I gotta grease it and check the lug bolts tires look fine I don't think I need to check those but need to grease it and check the lug bolts so don't really have a spot to shit you the dust, dust covers on all the research that's unheard of all right give these lug bolts a rattle when I borrowed this thing the lug bolts were loose on all four tires so this year I'm just gonna oh when I see there's grease circs on the hubs too I gotta hit but this year we're just gonna we're just gonna make double sure that they're not loose which Nick said he checked them but I'm gonna double double check them it's a whole lot better than a wheel falling off with six ton of fertilizer around actually there's only three or four ton in there but either way okay 
We gotta set the. I have to get a scraper. I gotta set. Well, it might be close, but I gotta set the uh, flow divider for urea. I'm gonna have to get a. The well, number should be there somewhere, so I'm gonna have to get a scraper so I can. Find okay, it. so here's our number plate, and we need it set to urea. They want it at three and a half or two and a half. So we have to. And there's three and a half, so that's where we want that, and then it is in low gear so hopefully i don't have to jump it to high gear uh 11 60 i want 150 pounds an acre Ooh, i can just barely make it wonder if I'd be better off to jump it to high gear and have the gate closed down. I wonder if I'd end up being more accurate than having it in low gear with the gate wide open. Because so basically what it's going to end up being is six and a half inches. Doesn't look like this thing's ever even been in low gear and high gear. Mm -hmm. I think it might be more accurate if I jumped it to high gear and had the gate closed. That might be the better route to go. So it looks like I need a 15 16 wrench. Or to you bastards, you had the opportunity to put a carriage bolt there and you used a regular bolt. Guess we're about to find out, but hopefully they sized everything to where the chain is correct for both gear, or the chain is the correct length for both gear ratios. That would be ideal. Okay, at least they did that. That partially makes up for the fact that they didn't use a carriage bolt for these sprockets, so you only needed one, one wrench. Come on guys, that's, that's one of the rules of using a slotted tensioner is you use a carriage bolt. This is Engineering 101. Engineering 102 is you forego the slotted tensioner and you just use an automatic spring tensioner. Okay, so, put that wrench there to hold that down. Should be plenty good. So now with that being done, our gate setting is now in high range. 137 to 171. Looks like we want about two and a quarter. I think that's a little too much. Close up. Kick over two, we'll call that good. So, gate set, lug bolts are checked, spreader's greased. Everything's hooked up, 
tractor's been gone over. I think we're ready to rock and roll. So, I guess... First thing I gotta do is go to the bank in the morning, and naturally the bank doesn't open till 9, so they burn up your entire morning waiting around for the bank to open. And then after I done, get done with that, we can go start spreading, so... But since all this is done, we can just jump on and go, so that makes it easier. But hopefully I didn't forget nothing. I don't think I did. I think we're good. So we'll catch you guys in the morning, and we'll start spreading. And we'll go from there. All right, I got all my running out of the way this morning, so we can finally get something productive done. yesterday this thing might need oil I don't know yeah she could use a little bit okay hold please okay
all bad. I must say, I am thoroughly impressed with this field. This is kind of uncharacteristic. Normally, this field doesn't make shit, mostly because of that native prairie ground right there that we talked about a couple videos ago. Cause that bean, I got a bean field right there. We sprayed that bean field a few days ago. But this is, and then that right there, that's a woodchuck. There's a damn woodchuck lives in here. He does the same thing on this little patch up front. Actually, there's probably another one because it's all along that ditch down there, but I wish that was that was a nice corn or that was a nice feet. I mean it still is a nice field. That's a 40 like 48 acres. 48, 50 acres, something like that. That farm is. It's the old Burns farm. It used to go with that farm across the street there it was the same family and a guy from chicago bought it and the thing the i guess the thing that pisses me off about chicago people buying ground around well a it drives up our property values and makes it damn near impossible for the locals to be able to afford anything of any size and b they go around and they buy all these old old beautiful farms like this because that that farmstead there is beautiful monster ass barn there's a little machine shed there's a chicken coop the house is huge they let the farm go to shit they don't take care of any of the outbuildings they don't they'll take care of the house because that's what they were interested in obviously but they never they generally unless they hire it done they don't take care of the yard they don't take care of the buildings they they do this to the field that's a waste of perfectly good farm ground right there like they just let the farms go to shit they have no ambition not to say they're all like that mom cleans for a few that are actually really good people and they they bought farms and they actually keep them up really good and they actually rent it out for farming like it should be but the vast majority of them do shit like this there's a lot of farms around here bought up by chicago people that turned into that and like I say, it paint the it, even more than letting the, the ground go to waste like that. What pains me the most is they let the farmsteads go to shit. I mean, that was when I was a kid. That was a beautiful farmstead, and this jackass just. But anyway, that's my rant for today. I just wanted to walk out here. This is how. This is what all the corn should look like right now. And it doesn't. But this field does, which like I say is completely uncharacteristic of this field. And it's like this all the way down. It's this is gonna be as long as the deer stay out of it, this can be some nice corn. So and this obviously was chisel plowed. This was fall plowed. I'm pretty, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure I plowed this last fall. I think it was, was one of them I found that was dry enough. So this was fall chiseled. That field goes with this little corner right here. That field over there is no-tilled. And I gotta say this because we had the one jackass on the last video talked about how much better his no-till corn was than any of the corn around here. That field right there, you see that big bare spot on that hill? That's all no-tilled. That being said, there's nothing wrong with those guys no-tilling to each their own. The difference between this field and that field is about the same difference as all the fields around here that look like this this year compared to all the fields that look like that. They planted a week after I did. That is literally all it took to go from this to that. Basically around here, if you got planted before the second weekend in May, you're doing all right. You're, you had enough moisture in the ground that most everything came up for the most part. You got planted after that second weekend in May, that's what you dealt with. That's the way everything, the second week of May on, that's what it looks like. Anybody that knows anything about farming, which is why the guy that le I know left that comment, I know he doesn't actually farm despite what he says. There's no way he does because otherwise he would know. The thing about a year like this, it doesn't matter what practices you, it doesn't matter what your cropping practices are. It doesn't matter how good you are. You can do everything right. In a year like this, where we got so dry so early, no matter what you do, Mother Nature's the great equalizer, and for lack of a better term, mother everybody's gonna get fucked equally. Like I say, all it all it took was like not even a full five days difference 
in planning date and you went from this to that that's didn't matter what you did you were just and every everybody got it it doesn't matter what they did you could be the you could be the biggest baddest operator in town or you could be the smallest guy in town no matter what no matter what you're doing mother nature will will bring you down a peg and put everybody on the same playing field that's just the way it is but anyway on to the next video Well, now I got a slight problem. I'm out of fertilizer. And I still probably got a half acre to spread here and nine acres back up in Michigan. And I came down here hoping, because I knew that I was getting close to out, I came down here hoping I'd have enough to spread this three acres, but I didn't. And I mean, I checked and double checked my setting. I was sh shooting to spread 150 pounds, so that should have been somewhere halfway between two and two and a half. I mean, even if I was overspreading a little bit, I shouldn't have came up nine and a half acres short on fertilizer. There ain't no way I was overlapping that much. Ain't no way in hell. The only thing I can figure is they shorted me. But unfortunately, my way ticket is at home in the truck. I guess I didn't even think to look at it when I left Helena yesterday. So I'm going to... I don't think they're open. I'm going to drive past there on my way home and see. And if they are, I mean... I mean, it's a nice day. There's a possibility with three days of rain supposedly coming up, but I guess I don't know what I'm going to do if they're not open. And this right here is why I will continue to do business with these guys, even if it costs me a little extra money. Apparently they were here this morning. I, I called the I don't know if you call him the manager. He's not really the manager, but he's kind of the manager um his great his granddad actually started the elevator and the fertilizer dealer started off as lakes farm service and then it got split up and sold off but anyway uh i felt really bad for calling him on a saturday but he did answer his phone and he's coming back to load me back up so come to find out they got a new kid running the blender and i should have questioned it but I guess I didn't even think about it because I was in a hurry to get home and get everything done. He told me the wrong bolt density. I, uh, 
he told me 45 which i was just thinking urea urea is extremely light generally it runs between 45 and 48 so i guess that's what maybe didn't or made me not even question it i didn't even think about the fact that i got ams in there and ams weighs about twice or not weighs about half again as much per cubic foot as urea so my bulk density should have been some probably closer to like 50 52 so i've been over spreading this whole time so that's where all my fertilizer went unfortunately luckily it all went on good corn so I, I, if i was somewhere in between here i was probably closer to that 200 pound mark so i was yeah probably somewhere between i was somewhere in between here so luckily it went on good corn so i didn't necessarily waste it i was planning on putting on 200 pounds of an acre to begin with 50 or split 50 percent 100 pounds of urea 100 pounds ams so i guess i ended up spreading what i was going to spread to begin with but because of the year i was going to cut it back by 50 pounds and spread 75 pounds of urea 75 pounds ams so but such is life i basically this is a lesson to me that i need to get my own bulk density scale and double check this stuff but it's never been a problem before because i've never been they've always had good people running the scales so new kid problems but anyhow i'm gonna get loaded back up and we'll actually get finished today didn't think we were going to be able to do it but the good corn's done the rest of it's gonna have to catch up a little bit before i spread any any fertilizer on it so i'm gonna guess probably at least a week and a half to two weeks it'll depend on when our next if i really hope we get another rain otherwise i may regret just not spreading it all right now but that being said if we don't get another rain that short stuff's probably gonna die anyhow so but anyway definitely he he definitely gave me the wrong bulk density um he told me 45 he he, he technically gave me the right numbers he just put them in the wrong order because then when we got loaded we checked it again and it was 54 pounds not 45 pounds so 
Can't completely put the blame on blender operator because I, I should have questioned it. But I guess the never, thought never even crossed my mind that he would screw something up like that. So. But. I don't know. It is what it is. No harm, no foul. I did the math and I was at like 190 pounds. Just a tick under instead of 150 pounds. So it ain't like I was spreading, spreading an exuberant amount of fertilizer. And it all went on decent looking corn. So. As long as we get that rain, none of it will be wasted, so it's not like I lost any money on it. Just spread more than what I initially intended. So. All I gotta do is pray for rain. We got chances, to, we got pretty decent chances tomorrow, Sunday the 25th. So, 25th, and then Monday and Tuesday, and then another shot, supposedly Friday, but... I'm not greedy. If we could at least get one, if we could at least get like a quarter inch out of one of those days, I'll take that as a win. We need more than that, but I'm not greedy, so I'll take what I can get. So, and Ryan, when he came to load me, he made me feel real bad because they were just getting ready to get on their boat, and today's his kid's birthday, so all his friends were over. I was like, he didn't have to tell me that. I tried to, I wanted him to give me his address because I was going to send him a gift card or something for coming in. He wouldn't do it. So I think I might uh, see if I can get on Helena's main website and see if they have some sort of like HR number or something. And call and put in a word for him or something because I got to do something for him because he didn't have to do that. But there's, there's a few guys down there that are like that and they'll just, they'll go above and beyond for you. So. There are good people in the world. You just got to look for them. Well, I guess I'm going to get this thing home put away and call her a day. So that's it for this one. I'll catch you guys on the next one.